Today we'll go over the installation, retraction, and removal of the PIP 702. Prior to connecting the probe, as we've already done at this point, um, apply your thread sealant to your probe and then connect it to a full port ball valve. The valve must be full port in order for the probe tip to pass through the probe into the pipeline. Um, also, the probe should be hand tight. Um, make sure not to over tighten the probe as it may cause damage to the tip of the probe that could affect installation or retraction um, if not caught initially. Next, confirm that all the integral valves, the vent, the outlet, the gauge, as well as the pressure equalization valve are closed. Um, at this time, you can tube to your outlet, insert a pressure gauge, and if you would like to vent using tubing, uh, please connect this at this time. Note, the threaded vent port permits venting to toxic process gases to a safe area through a vent line. Next, we are going to confirm that the threads are tightened and we are secure both on the installation housing as well as the ball valve provided with the 702. If your 702 is existing prior to the ball valve, we strongly encourage you and recommend that the ball valve be secure. Also, we want to confirm our magnetic indicator and our magnetic washer is working and magnetic. Ideally, it would be at the top of the installation housing, however, this being a smaller probe, ours happens to be on the lower portion. So we will get a small installation during this demonstration. Note, if leaks are present, close the process ball valve and depressurize the 702 using the 702 integral vent valve. Reseal the areas of concern and repeat this step from the beginning. If everything appears secure, we can then open our full port process ball valve, allowing gas to go through the probe
With our process ball valve open, we can begin to install the probe. We'll turn the probe handle clockwise in order to install. Again, we would track our magnetic washer, but as you can see, this being a small unit with the valve, you only get a little bit of drop here, but we will do want to make sure that it is responding as the installation takes place. Note, the rack crank should turn easily. Do not apply excessive torque to the handle. After the probe has been fully inserted and has come to a mechanical stop, the magnetic position indicator should be recessed into the body, showing that the probe has been fully inserted. Once the probe is fully inserted, rotate the probe block counterclockwise so that the probe block will be protruding from the body. You're actually pulling the probe block across the body or across the top of the probe, preventing the probe from being able to be removed vertically. Once the probe is fully inserted in the lock position, use your screwdriver and open the vent valve by turning it counterclockwise. Note, the probe will move slightly upwards against the lock as the insulation housing vents. Once fully open, you may close your ball valve on the probe. And now fully depressurized, we can remove our installation housing. This installation housing will be the full length of the probe. Be careful not to lose your magnet indicator and keep it with your installation housing. Once the housing has been completely depressurized and the valve is closed, we can now close our vent valve. We've already removed our housing. Um, however, if the housing is greater than three feet, uh, A plus strongly recommends removing that housing all the time. If it is less than three feet, the housing may be left in place if so desired. Once our probe is installed in a locked lock position and our installation housing has been vented and removed, uh, we will have a few options depending on when the 702 is purchased and what your current setup is. If you have the recommended ball valve as shown here attached to the body, you may either apply your thread sealants to the plug that came with the probe 
and plug the top of your valve in order to keep uh, moisture and anything else that may uh, fill up that space. You may also install the 12 inch pig pipe that came with your probe. And again, if it was a newer purchase, the pig pipe came with a valve on top of it as well in order to safely remove the probe if there were any uh, obstructions or failures during that process so that you can then connect the installation housing as well. So depending on what you have, uh, depends on what you could put here. If the probe is locked in the full insertion and ready for use, and you do not have a full port ball valve at the top of the body, again, A plus strongly encourages you to install this as it will help if there were any errors or um, failures of the process seals that could inhibit you from removing the probe under pressure. Note, if the valve was not purchased with the probe, the default supply cap on the 12 inch pipe nipple could be removed and it can be replaced with a customer supply full port three quarter inch MPT ball valves. Once the probe is fully inserted, locked, and protected with the cap, we will confirm that the outlet is tuned and connected to feed our analyzer. And at this time, we can open our outlet valve by turning it counterclockwise to allow flow to the analyzer. Be careful not to open the valve too quickly as an increase in flow may cause liquids to permeate through the membrane at a faster rate. So it is pertinent to slowly open that valve to allow that, allow that flow to gradually get to the analyzer. Removal versus retraction. Removal refers to completely removing the probe from the process ball valve. Retraction differs from removal in that the probe is not completely removed from the process ball valve. Instead, the probe remains on the process ball valve, but the probe is retracted up into the 702 body and a short 12 inch housing so that the pipeline is cleared for maintenance such as picking the line. In order to remove the probe, we will close our outlet and confirm that our probe is locked in place. Again, that's showing that the probe lock is protruding from the body. Once confirmed and closed, we will then open our vent valve by rotating it counterclockwise. At this time, we would remove our cap or our additional piping if we left it here uh, after installation and either install the full 12 inch pig piping that has an additional valve or in this case we would install our installation housing which is the full length of the probe to the ball valve on the body of the 702. Confirm that it's tight and securely in place. With our installation housing fully in place and tightened, we can now close our vent valve by turning it clockwise. Once closed, we can slowly open our pressure equalization valve 
by turning it counterclockwise. At this time, we want to make sure that we have our magnetic indicator in place and that it is at the bottom of the installation housing on top of the ball valve. And we can now slowly open our ball valves, allowing for the housing to be pressurized. Now with the pressure equalized, we're going to unlock the probe by using our screwdriver and turning the probe block clockwise back into the body of the probe. Once it comes to a mechanical stop and the probe is fully unlocked, we can now begin to remove the probe or retract the probe by turning our hand crank clockwise Make sure that the magnetic indicator is attached and that it does respond as the probe rises up so that you're able to track it. Again, this being a smaller probe, we are only going to get a little bit of rise on our indicator here and we will track our probe until the handle comes to a mechanical stop. Note, the rack crank should turn easily. Do not apply excessive torque to the handle. Stop here for tracking the probe. Continue on if removing the probe from the lock. With our probe fully retracted, we may now close our process isolation ball valve. And now to depressurize the trap pressure in the body of the probe, we will open our vent valve and vent the trap gas. Once that has been vented, we can now disconnect all of the eighth inch tubing connected to the probe. The 702 can now be removed from the closed process ball valve using a wrench on the wrench flats on the body of the probe. 